Okay. So the last time I tried this, my computer shut off. We're further than last time. I'm shitting myself, by the way. So that's why my fans are going. At least that's like told me why my fans are going because I'm always at 100% GPU usage. So I'm GPU bottlenecks by a mile. Loads of people have said, oh, upgrade your CPU, upgrade your CPU. I'm fucking fine on CPU. Shit. <laughs> Everyone's telling me to put a better Ryzen in there. I'm like, yeah, it's good price to performance, to be fair. But, uh... Yeah. I like the orange. GPU seems to be... Uh, 580. RX... Radeon RX 580. And C, uh, CPU is... Ryzen 1500X. Which I think, like, it's fair when people have said, oh, you should upgrade that, because they were great at the time, but they were like... Oh, no, it's perfectly enough for AOR. It's just the fact that, like... So, I've always said, why do, game, why do certain games rip my fans really hard? Why is the menu using less GPU power? The GPU has cooled down since we got in-game. The game runs better than the goddamn menu in Art of Rally. And now my CPU's picking up. But yeah, that's why if the graphics look dog shit, um, I'm trying to not kill my computer. I've also capped the FPS to 144, it was 240. Because I like having more FPS than the V-Sync limit, but fuck it, we cap. No V-Sync, we cap FPS. And also a cool thing, frame count. I've always wondered, how many frames has my GPU rendered in its lifetime? I wish I could know. Well, I can at least tell you. You can basically see how long my session's been going for. Divide frame count by 144 uh, at any point to see how long my session's been roughly going for. No, auto means oh shit. Auto means uses graphics preset setting. So you can set the preset to low and say I want low but I want I don't know high crowd detail. So auto will just set to whatever whatever your overall is set to. To be honest with you, I wish I could set the FPS cap to 150. Just then, just because no matter what you do, your FPS, whenever I cap FPS, your FPS is never stable at the cap. It always fluctuates a little bit at the cap. And that's why I don't use frame rate caps. Or when I do, I put them to twice the frame rate. Like, I used 250 in Quake. 300 in Quake 1, even though higher frame rates are better in Quake 1, apparently. And everyone should be using 1,000. But I just hate my GPU going... Rrrr. I'm playing Quake 1, for fuck's sake. Why are you going... Rrrr. Why are you re at a game that's three years older than me?
This computer's old though. I put, like, all of these parts are 2017. My PSU's been in here since... The reason I thought it was my PSU when it died? My PSU's been in here since 2013 when I got the computer. The only thing that's going that long is the hard drive, which is now a secondary hard drive, because I put an SSD in this thing. And the disk tray, which has broken that many fucking times. But the case, and the, the only real proper, like, always in use part, PSU. That thing has done me proud. Because I didn't know if I could upgrade my computer. And then all of a sudden, Ryzen, and, uh, Ryzen comes out. And Ryzen says, Lower watts more power. I'm like, I'm in. Sign me the flying fuck up. Because at the time I was doing video editing on an i3. I had an i3 in this before. And my god, programming and compiling stuff and video editing on an i3? Fuck! This i5 has as much cycles as my i3, but it's got 8 cores. <laughs> or 4 cores, 8 threads, I think, actually. My i3 had fucking 2 cores. 2, two cores, 4 threads. And the second, th the, the threads, the hype of the virtualized threads that weren't real cores, they weren't great. Yeah, hopefully, it's not too bad. Right, I'm watching the temperatures, and apparently we're good. Apparently that CPU temperature is very good. 56 degrees, working, at 60% load. That's apparently, like, insane. I've been meaning to install Mango HUD for ages, to be fair. Turbo, please, if there's any uh, bans against Mango HUD or any uh, virtualization HUDs, please don't ban me. Please add an exception. Thanks. <laughs> I shit myself earlier. I should have said this when Turbo would have still actually been watching. I shit myself because Turbo sent me a bunch of messages that started with uh, the stream, with the, the run link. And the problem was, I got these messages not on my phone or on my commu computer, but on my bike computer as a notification message from Turbo. Discord. And all I could see was the run link. Because he sent the run link and then a message about the run. And they were all fine messages. It was just the fact that all I could see was a run link and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, what have I done? And there's four messages and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, what have I done? Yeah, it would kill me if this... This run is clearly cheated. It, surely, I'm affording... Oh shit, the bed. I'm affording more protection against cheated runs with this because you can now look at the... There's the time in the top corner. But of course that could be edited afterwards. But there's the frame time. The, the, not the frame time, the frame count. Which apparently freezes with the game as well because the game doesn't do any frames here. That's interesting, actually. Watch the frame count at the end of this run, when I press continue, you know when the game just goes and freezes, the frame count froze, indicating that the game full on locks up at that point, like, properly. Which is interesting. 
But yeah, I, I reckon I'm affording better protections from splicing, and Lady Doth protests too much, of course, but... That's my argument, I'm split, sticking to it. I've got it. I've got controller inputs on the screen. I went through a phase. One of the reasons I've got controller inputs is because I want. I, I like watching people's controller inputs. But I went through a phase of effectively trying to put everything on my screen. Every time I watched a cheat, you know, a couple of years ago. Of 2021, all the cheating documentaries are coming out. Carl Jobs was getting popular because of the cheating documentary. Uh, Riolu. Uh, there was Mario Kart cheaters. There was Lukuki was hitting the hitting it big in Mario, um, having cheated in Mario Kart DS. I reckon they should unban him from Mario Kart DS, but I'm not like actually properly in that community. There's a little bit of sentiment that they would unban him if he asked. It seems. I don't know. It just feels like guy's done his time. He hangs out, hangs out every once in a while in various people's chats. Also, I need to see if Abel's live because yesterday I ended stream and Abel was live, and I went and watched Abel, and I was like, I should have fucking raided Abel because I had like two or three people watching the stream who clearly would want to watch Mario Kart speedruns. I would think. And Abel's great. Go follow Abel. A-B-E-L on Twitch. If he's live right now, please come back. Because he is probably better, more entertaining than me. And definitely better at video games. E-L. Not L-E. A-B-E-L. Spanish first name. I don't know how he managed to get that username on Twitch. Because he is not super big or anything. But he's reasonable size, you know, he gets like 70 viewers, something like that. See quite often. But I've got no idea how he managed to secure that name. He used to be MKDS able for a long time. Then somehow got the full name, which, okay, cool. But yeah, he does um, Mario Kart speedruns. He also does runs uh, if you go to his YouTube channel in fact I think I've got it I do is this the old link or is this the actual one oh it's the actual one so yeah go there um, that's his YouTube channel it's an incredible documentary about Mario Kart DS uh, yeah it's great I highly recommend Highly recommend watching that. It's a fantastic documentary that I can't believe came out in 2021. I can't believe that I spent 2020 hyping up MKDS 2021. I can't believe that I still haven't basically done anything in Mario Kart DS since then. I said last year, someone was like, oh, who should we do as Player of the Year nominations? And I said something that happened the day that that fucking video released. Uh, in 2021, and I said that that should be the player of the year from last year. Like, whoops. So it was like, 2021, I was like, oh my god, time has flown, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Also, I don't think I've set a PB since then, I just like hang around in the chats. I, I mentioned this, when Turbo sent me those messages, I mentioned this um, to the person I was cycling with today. And she said, after I said 1,920 tracks, and she said, how long is that taking you? It's, like, well, it's basically like six months of daily playing, like if you played an hour a day, it'd take you six months. And she said, why would you do that to yourself? Why are we out in the sun, getting sunburned on a really long bike ride? Something to do, innit?
Mm. When I first thought of this, one of the one of the things at the time was that there were actually some tracks and combinations that had never been played by anybody at the time that I uh, was going for this. But uh, a guy called Schnellfarm has already done this. But he hasn't done it in the way that I'm doing. With the uh, online things as well, and I've I reckon I've beaten him. I am going to send him the the Python script and see if he'll run it if I can get in contact with him. Um, I'm going to try and send him the Python script, see if we can compare times, just so I can be like, yeah, I've got the fastest, I've got the fastest out of the known people that have done this. The nice thing is, there's a couple of people who've done it with all bonus vehicles actually as well. But the nice thing is, it's still such a grind to get through all the rest of the main vehicles. And considering that I worked out that if you do for one second per track, it's 32 minutes. If it takes you five seconds to check each track, to check that you've done it, you know, you would actually... We could actually make another script. This would be a bit easier. If we made a script that organises your tracks alphabetically, removes dailies and weeklies, and strips the time off of the end and the car, so it's only the thing that's the track name. So the thing that never changes, that everyone has, because everyone's car changes and their track name. Parts 2 and 3, and, uh, or 1 and 2 if you go 0. But parts 1 and 2. Um, strips all those, sorts them alphabetically. Then you could... No, you couldn't. You couldn't use... I was just going to say you could chuck the two files into diff, but you can't because it compares line 1 versus 1, 2 versus 2, 3 versus 3, so event, as soon as you're missing 1, everything after is going to be different. Um, in some way, compare the two files and see which... I'm sure there's a Linux command you can use to compare the files and see what tracks you're missing. Because I did think about that from, for my grind when I was first planning it, figuring out which tracks I was actually missing. But for this, it shouldn't... Then this whole idea of filling out the speedrun leaderboards came through anyway, which is a cool thing for me to do because that's where my grinding in Art of Rally is going to go into. It's, I'm probably not going to play individual tracks very often unless there's a particular reason to like I you know want to practice one for a speed run that I'm doing and decide to just you know stick in with it for a bit which will probably happen because if I'm doing like say this run in Germany it's like an hour per full attempt so if I've only got 20 minutes left before I need to get off I might as well put 20 minutes into a single track I guess you have to manually program all the track names if you don't want to use the numbers. We don't have to manually program all the track names. What we have to do is wait for me to finish the game, confirm that I have a completed file, and then we use the output of that completed file as our basis for that's finished. But my thought was literally it wouldn't... The, the th my first thought was that it wouldn't be too difficult because we'd just um, use diff, but diff wouldn't work. But I assume there's some way to basically compare... Compare lines in a file and spit out the the lines from file A that aren't in file B at any point. 
No, the order of the file is the, um, is the order in which you did them, but if you, so, say this is my first time doing Hull's Wrath Reverse in Group 4, that will be put at the bottom of my file. If I then finish this whole challenge, have a 100% completed record, and then go back and complete and set a new PB, it will just edit this line in the file. It's really weird because it, it shows you which tracks you did when. Uh, like I can tell you, you know when we were pissing around with the file and trying to work out things? When I did Kenya in Group 3, I only got one. Out of all of Kenya, wet and dry, I only got one track. Oh no, I only, no, didn't, only got one dry track that I'd never played before in Kenya, in Group 3. And like, not many wet tracks to be fair, I don't think it was. So, yeah. It's quite cool that it preserves the order in which it did the tracks. So yeah, I was thinking you'd just... Because um, you could order it alphabetically to compare them. You know, if contains weekly or daily, who fit? Don't need it. Otherwise, stick it in there alphabetically. Or if you're comparing, because I was thinking doing diff, which would mean that they had to be the same. But if you're comparing lines to lines, but then you'd have to compare every line to every other line in the in the whole thing, which is going to be brutal on on cycles because you've got to compare 1,900 and... If you're comparing everything to everything, it's power of, isn't it? So 1920 to the power of 1920 is infinity, apparently. 1920 is times, isn't it? So you would have to do 3,608... 686,400 comparisons. I think, or infinity, one of the two, if comparing, yeah, because you, you're not comparing every line in A to every line in B, you're comparing every line in, I oh, know you are, yeah, shit. Yeah, because you've got to go down each line in A. So you're potentially comparing what you I think it might be 36 3.6 million comparisons which it would be doable it would be doable and then to remember which ones aren't there Although actually, tell you what, if you organised them alphabetically and did some fancy shit, I bet you could do it so that you compare... Um, shit. I bet you could do it so that you compare line 1 versus line 1. And then line 2 versus line 2. And line 3 versus line 3. And, you know, assuming that those are all correct things. And then when you get to, say, line 4 is missing, or is, is not matching, you compare line 4 of the complete, of the incomplete one to line 5 of the complete one. And now you know that line 4 is missing. I think. So that would lower the number of comparisons. That would create the number of... Com that would maximum. That would make... If you could do that, the maximum number of compar... I don't know how you'd do that programmatically. Uh, but I assume it can be done. If you do that, 
you're only comparing 1920 times in theory right it's just how you do that I suppose you'd use the index of increment the index of completed file and test file each time don't increment it if it fails store the index I hope you're writing this down because I am going to forget this in 30 seconds store the index of completed file when it fails then at the end print out all of the indexes of completed file that failed the test So if you do that, then you can compare the two files and see what you're missing, I think. And then all you've got to do is provide a completed file to someone, which we can provide a completed file that they can't use because uh, it'll have the, the numbers stripped out of it. And it does, actually it doesn't matter if we provide a completed file that they can use even because you can put it in the game and it will give you your time locally, but it won't work online. So it doesn't really matter, because there's no way to cheat like that. If you only want to check which stages are missing, just check every location, every group if you have six tracks each. Eh? Uh, but that won't re that seem I can't fe I can't think of how that would work programmatically at all and also that's only going to tell you what what set of six tracks is missing Yeah, 1920 combinations. There's eight countries, ten car classes, six stages per country. Now right, let's go back one step. Six stages per country times Two directions is 12 times two uh, rain and dry is 24 times eight countries is 90 is 192 times 10 car classes is a hundred and uh, 1920. And now I'm just slightly thinking, I hope I actually calculated that correctly somewhere with a calculator rather than just head math of it. I'm pretty sure I did because I did just work backwards to work out that 24 times 8 must be 100, 192 because then I have to times it by 10. Now nah, I've got to... Surely I checked the how the spreadsheet I made when I upload the videos I put which track number it is and I made a spreadsheet uh, where the function is this number is the number above it plus 12 and then copy pasted Finland 
wet, Finland dry, fin uh, Sardinia, nor you know every single one. Copy pasted the car, and then I know what I'm doing, and I know where I am, and then I can also. It's quite nice because I've basically got a progress bar. I go into it every time I upload the videos, and set set all the ones I've done to green. And I've just had a little progress bar going. And so it's it's nice to see where the progress bar is sometimes. It is getting very hot in my room, but the computer seems fine. Now admittedly, the doors are off the computer, because I thought practically, for a short period of time, it is better to have the doors off of the computer, because not much dust is going to get in, but the, the cooling is going to be way better, and in theory, the amount of heat going into the room is the same, right? You know, the, the amount of heat actually pumping out into my room is the same. It just got really hot in the computer before it pumped out into my room. At the same time, I will be completely honest with you. The exhaust port on the computer, probably not in a great place, I've got to say. Not, I, I think there's some, pr if I did like the smoke can thing that pr proper computer people do to see where there's dead spots of air hanging around and where the air flow's going, I think I would see a complete vacuum around my GPU because where the GPU is right above the GPU so below the GPU fan, fans suck up from the bottom below the GPU is the top of the PSU not a lot of space in there um, and actually I'm not sure which way they blow do they, they might blow rather nah they've got a They've got to suck. They've got to suck air up and into the... And then blow it across the... Thing. Across the cooling fins. They've got to do that because there's no way they're going to get air the other way. Um, yeah, behind that's then the case exhaust fan. So there's probably a pressure dead zone there on the GPU, which is... So there's then a second part where I really need to just forget that my GPU sort of kind of broke after, or at least I thought it did. I had all of my cables wrong. I thought my DVI went into my screen on the right hand side of me. It doesn't, it goes into the left. I've got a display port to DVI cable that goes into the screen that's on the right. And the display port to DVI on the screen on the right is um, had fallen out because it wasn't screwed in properly so the screen was glitching then I unplug the DVI and that screen turns off and the other screen has magically got no connection because of course I've just unplugged the DVI <laughs> turns out the uh, back of the DVI cable in the um, display port to DVI connector wasn't properly plugged in. It had fallen out a little bit in all of the unplugging the computer after the computer went pop. Um, yeah.
хочет. I have three screens and can quite easily connect my TV to my computer if I need the fourth. All I've got to do is unplug the HDMI cable from my Switch and plug it into the back of my uh, computer. And then I have the most incredible thing, because that HDMI cable runs through a capture card for the Switch and for the Wii, when the Wii's plugged into it. Uh, I, if I plug my TV into my computer, then I have a capture card of my computer going into my computer. Oh yeah, two monitor setup for anything sort of program-esque. I remember when I used to only have one monitor for playing uh, for my computer. And streaming, I used to play Minecraft uh, windowed mode with just enough space to put the chat. And at one point, I had this really old laptop, and I don't know where my dad got it from, but I had 512 meg of RAM, and we upgraded it to a gig together. It ran win Windows XP. But I was still running, I didn't mind because I was still running Windows XP on the actual family desktop computer. Um, and I. I used that laptop, it was dog shit. Uh, it was weird. Thinking back to it, it had a gig of RAM and a Pentium and it ran Windows XP. How did it run so badly when the main computer that we had had a Core 2 Duo, which is pretty good, but it only had two gigs of RAM. So that computer ran like absolute arse, but the desktop it didn't run too badly for a while and then it it got slowly worse and worse and then I got this computer with 8 gigs of RAM and I was blown away by the speed and also the size of the screen the screen was that much bigger that when I started playing Minecraft on this computer I played it in windowed mode all the time whether I was whatevering or uh, whether I was streaming or not because I literally had to the screen was too big. Eventually I got used to it, slowly making the screen bigger and bigger and bigger until, uh, yeah, now I've got an extra inch, my main monitor, my old main monitor is my second monitor that the chat is on, and I've got an extra inch, and 144 hertz. It's insane. We gave ours away. My mum said, can you make that computer work? I've got a friend whose kid wants to learn about computers. And I said, well, I'm not giving it away with Windows XP on it. I'm fairly sure our Windows XP probably has a virus from the last time I used it. I'm definitely not giving it away with a probably virus Windows XP. I'm going to put Linux on it. And she said, well, I think you mentioned something about wanting to learn Linux, so fine. Well, okay, fuck it. Don't put anything pre. I sent it with a note that said, "Don't put anything precious." I think the hard drive's about to die because mathematically it should have been. That computer was so old and had been through so many cycles. It was an IDE drive. I had a graphics card because my dad. My dad's the weird, weird guy weird guy he realized I was going to get into gaming and decided to put a graphics card in the com family computer when he upgraded it and I think it's probably one of the best 
It was a £20 graphics card. It was probably one of the best £20 decisions he ever spent. Because I guarantee you, that £20, putting, in, putting that £20 into this computer, or not this one, but, you know, the old family computer, I guarantee you that saved him having to buy Xbox Live. <laughs> Because I literally played Xbox Live so little that I used to buy monthly uh, Xbox Live because I would I'd play it for a bit and then wouldn't play it after that for a while. If I used Xbox, if I, like, I used the Xbox as a media center because it had YouTube on it, you didn't need Xbox Live Gold for that. You just need regular. I, I missed so much of those sort of early gaming things. Like, there's so many people that have these memories of, oh, I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I'm like, I played Minecraft for so long and did barely anything. It was great. Ninety-nine percent of the games I've played, I never got through. A game that I have such fond memories of as a child was a PS1 game called No Fear Downhill Mountain Biking. Such fond memories of that game as a child. I never finished the second level. It took me about two and a half hours. I got a little um, emulation console, so my desk just in front of me. Portable emulation Android system. You know. This, this game console, my mum was really worried about getting it for me because it was quite expensive for my birthday this year. And she, and the first thing I thought when I saw it was like, that's PS1 sticks. So, and it runs, and have a look. Okay, it runs PS1 games. It'll struggle with Xbox, original Xbox games. So it'll struggle with PS2 games. Okay. Okay. So it's PS1. And it's got the D-pad in the good place as well. So it's PS1. And it's, what's it, um, storage, okay. I fucking knocked it up. And there were about two, uh, two and a half hours I'd beaten more, and I was on a track that I didn't recognise. I was like, I fucking got loads of fond memories of this game, I just don't recognise it. But that console's sick, I should play more on it. It's just, like, consoles for me, I don't pick them up. DS is the same. My mum was like, oh, you play on it as much as you play on your DS? Yeah, probably. Barely at all. <laughs> Every once in a while, throw, uh, throw the DS. It'll go on holiday with me. But I can't really play games in the car. I feel sick if I play games in the car. I'm not too bad reading or watching things. Um, but I can't... Playing games in the car tends to get me and it doesn't matter what it is surprisingly because I've got I've got a mate who says you can't play um, on the train or in the car can't play driving games and mo and you know moving games like like anything that anything that would move like the vehicle that they're in that kind of disorients you but a platform will be perfectly fine a platform will be perfectly fine Yeah, Raspberry Pi and what's it for game emulation is pretty good. The Wii is insane though, because if you mod your Wii, you can get all of the, um, you can get so many different games, like, because you can get the GameCube games. GameCube but Wii games, native. Wii U is the best console, by the way. Um, I actually kind of want to get one, because Wii U is insane, because you can get Wii U, Wii and GameCube games are native. Then you've got the Virtual Console Store. 
So if you like Nintendo games, I'm pretty sure you can play every Mario Kart game on a Wii U. And I think the only one you have to emulate is Super Circuit. No, you'd have to emulate uh, the first one. So you can definitely get on the Wii U, you can get um, 64. Then you can get, so you can get 64 and you can get uh, DS on the Virtual Console. Then you'd be able to play Double Dash on the GameCube, Wii, because it's a Wii U, obviously 8 because it's a Wii U. So the only ones you can't play are Super Circuit, which you'd be able to emulate, Switch, uh, Super on the, on the NES, the original one, on the Super Nintendo, Super Mario Kart, and the other one. Seven. Thirty-nine, thirty-six, six, one, four. Cheers, Turbo. Please don't ban me for Mango Hood. Cheers. <laughs>